Let's do some more practice of finding volumes of solids of revolution using the shell method uh, that we've learned about previously, right? So in this example, we want to find the volume generated by rotating the region bounded by the two given curves you can see around the y-axis. We're going to take the curve y equals x squared, uh, which is the lower curve in our picture right here. And then the other curve is y equals the quadratic x, 6x minus 2x squared, uh, which is this upper curve you see right here. Uh, and again, we want to rotate this around the y-axis. And so we can see that there's these two natural, it doesn't tell us the bounds, x ranges from what to what, and we can see from the picture there's two natural bounds we can use here. One of them seems like the origin, 0, 0. Um, we should always be cautious when we trust too much in a picture because pictures can be sometimes deceptive, uh, but it, it sure seems like 0, 0 works. And you could check that if you plug in um, x equals 0, y equals 0, that's a solution. If you plug it in here as well, that is a point of intersection. Uh, we do need to figure out this other point right here, what is it? And whenever you want to find intersections between these functions, you just set the two functions equal to each other. So the first function is y equals x squared. The second one is y equals 6x minus 2x. Set them equal to each other and solve. Um, we could add 2x squared to both sides. That's going to give a 3x squared is equal to 6x. Um, Actually, I mean, we might as well just set everything equal to zero. 3x squared minus 6x equals zero. Factor, you can pull out a common divisor of 3x that leaves behind x minus 2. And so this is going to give us the, the two intersections we're looking for, x equals zero and x equals 2. So that's going to be the x coordinate we want over here, x equals 2. To figure out the y coordinate, plug it into either of the function. Into y equals x squared, x2 would give us y is to the fourth. Sorry, y is equal to 4. Uh, and you can double check with the other one as well. Um, 6 times 2 is 12, minus 2 times 2 squared, uh, that's an 8. 12 minus 8 is a 4 as well. That's the intersection we want. So that's, that's important to know. So we know the points for which we are going to vary. Um, if we want to rotate around the y-axis, we ask ourselves, do our cross sections, are they parallel to the axis of revolution or perpendicular? Well, if these, as these are both functions, f y equals f of x and y equals g of x right here. Um, a typical cross-section you'd see here in orange, the thickness of that thing is going to be a delta x. That delta x is going to converge to be a dx as these things get thinner and thinner and thinner. So we want to integrate this thing with respect to x. So the shell method is going to be the more preferred method to use in this one as opposed to the washer method here. And so as we've seen with the shell method before, where the volume is going to equal the integral. We'll come back to that. Uh, but in fact, the shell method always has a 2 pi sitting in front, like that. Then you're going to take the radius. How far away from the axis are we? And that's what we can see right here. Uh, the distance between the axis and the cross section is the x coordinate, which is in that case just means it's going to be x. So we get 2 pi x. Then we need the height of the function, the height of the rectangle, I should say. The height's going to be this length right here. How far apart are these? Well, the top of the rectangle is 6x minus 2x squared. The bottom is an x squared. So the length is going to be the, the difference of those things. 6x minus 2x squared minus x squared. Do put some parentheses around that. 6x minus 2x squared minus x squared. We can simplify that in a bit, but I'm putting it this way so we emphasize where it came from. And then what's the thickness of this rectangle, like we mentioned before, that's exactly a dx right there. And so since we know that we're integrating with respect to x, we need to find bounds for which x varies from. x equals what? x equals what? Well, the smallest we get is over here at x equals 0. The largest we get is over here at x equals 2. And so now we're ready. We've set up this integral. We're now ready to simplify it and to compute the volume. Uh, so mostly it's the uh, it's the two the negative two x squared combining with the negative x there that we want to do. So we're going to get two pi the integral from zero to two. We get x times six x minus three x squared like we did before. Uh, that is we, we, we this is kind of similar to what we had before. Um, distribute the x I would say. I mean, we could do we could try some type of u substitution, but I think distribution is probably a little bit simpler here. Just an algebraic maneuver that makes life a little bit easier. We get 6x squared minus 3x cubed 
integrate with respect to x. Um, our function is now prepped for surgery. Uh, let us then integrate. Uh, so by the usual power rule of integration, uh, we want to find some antiderivatives. We'll start with 6x. That'll become a 6x cubed over 3. And then we're going to get 3x to the 4th over 4, going from 0 to 2. Admittedly, 3 does go into 6 two times. If we distribute this 2 onto the two pieces, uh, 2 does go into 4. And so this would look like, I'm going to leave the pi actually factored out for now. Uh, we're going to end up with a 4x cubed minus 3 halves x to the 4th. I can't see any other way of simplifying that until we plug in the 0 and the 2. Now the good news is when you plug in 0, everything is a multiple of x, so it'll just vanish at 0. So plug it in 2 is where the interesting thing is going to happen. Uh, we end up with a pi times 4 times 2 cubed minus 3 over 2 times 2 to the 4th, like so. You'll notice that one of the 2's here cancels with this 2 right here. So we're left with 2 cubed, which is just an 8. I'm going to factor that thing out because both of these things are divisible by 8. So now you get an 8 pi, and you're left with just a 4 minus a 3. 4 minus 3 is just a 1, so we end up with the volume of this being 8 pi. So, And so we calculate this using the shell method. If one was using the, the washer method to try to calculate these things, notice a typical cross-section would look like this rectangle right here. And so as you rotate this thing around and around and around the y-axis, there's going to be a hole in it. And with the washer method, you have to pay attention to what's the outer hole, what's the inner, or what's the outer radius, what's the inner radius to compensate for the hole. One like, thing I really like about the shell method is the shell method automatically keeps track of holes. You don't have to worry about a longer radius and a shorter radius. There's only one radius to work with because we're really just focusing on the average radius. And so honestly, if I had to pick to, between the method, I always I think the shell method actually does turn out to be a little bit cleaner in terms of calculations, typically. Not always. There are times where the washer method is preferable. And honestly, I would tell you, you pick the shell method when your cross-section is parallel to the axis. You pick the washer method or the disk method when your cross-sections are perpendicular to the axis. Let's take another example here. Um, let's, use, let's use the shell method to find the volume of this solid revolution um, that's obtained by rotating around the x-axis. Uh, the curve y equals the square root of x when you go from 0 to 1, as you see the picture right here. Now, if we're going to use the shell method to calculate this one, we, we've done this with the washer method before, uh, the disk method, I should say. But let's see how it would look like with the, with the uh, shell method here. If you're going to do the shell method and you rotate around the x-axis, your cross-sections have to be parallel to your axis, which would tell us that the thickness is going to be a delta x or a dy. Sorry, a delta y which becomes a d of y when you take the integral here. Um, and so then the radius is going to be this right here, be y, um, which if you're integrating with respect to y, that's great. And then you have the height here. What's this distance right here? Uh, how long is this thing? Well, you have this x-coordinate 1. Subtract from it the x-coordinate of this point right here. So this x comma y. And we know this is the function x equals y squared. Um, where did that come from? Well, that's because we start off with y equals the square root of x. But if we're going to integrate with respect to y, it turns out we don't want a function in terms of x. We want a function in terms of y. So if you solve for x, you get x equals y squared. And so that's the y coordinate that shows up right here. So you're going to get 1 minus y squared. This is the height of your rectangle. The radius that you spin in will be y. And the thickness is always, uh, is always a, D, a delta y, in this case, dy. And so I think we're now good to set up our integral. The volume would equal the integral, um, 2 pi. Your radius, which here is a y. Your height, which is going to be a 1 minus y squared. And then your thickness, which is going to be a dy, like so. We then have to pay attention to the bounds. Since we're integrating with respect to y, these are going to be y coordinates, y equals whatever to y equals whatever. What are the smallest value of y you can get? That's going to be down here at y equals 0. What's the biggest y coordinate you get? It's going to be this point right here. Um, so when x equals 1, 
you can plug that into this equation right here. When x equals 1, y equals 1. So that's this point here, 1, 1. So y equals 1. And so now we're ready to calculate this integral. Uh, only recommendation, I would say, is uh, distribute the y here. And so the volume would equal 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 1. We get y minus y cubed dy. So finding the antiderivative, we're going to get a y squared over 2 minus a y to the fourth over 4 from 0 to 1. Much like the last example, when we plug in the 0, everything will vanish. You plug in the 1, we'll just get a bunch of fractions. Uh, so we end up with this. 2 pi times 1 half minus 1 fourth. Distributing the 2 through helps a little bit. Uh, that would give us a 1 minus a half. And then 1 take away a half is itself a half. We get the volume to be pi halves. Like so. And so one could, one could have done this problem using the washer method as well, or in this case, the disk method. Because with the disk method, your cross sections will be looking something like this, right? And so for the, if we were to use the disk method here, we would integrate with respect to x, right? Because so, our thing looks like pi r squared uh, dr. Um, the, radius, the radius in that case would be your y coordinate, which would be the square root of x. You square it. Uh, the thickness was a dx. You integrate from 0 to 1. Uh, you go like this, and then if you simplify it, of course, notice the square of the square root just gives you an x. So you end up with 0 to 1 pi x dx. And so integrating that, you're going to get pi x squared over 2 from 0 to 1. Plug it in 0 makes it disappear. Plug it in 1 ends up with a pi over 2. So when you compare this one here, the washer method is a much simpler approach to this exercise, what we see here in red. Um, the shell method took a little bit more, a uh, little bit more involved here. There are many situations where both will work, and so but one might be simpler than the other, and it really comes down to what do you want your cross sections to look like? Are they parallel to the axis or uh, perpendicular to the axis? It makes a difference, and so we learn these two different methods, the washer method and the shell method, because. Like I said, even though sometimes they both work, one typically works a lot better than the other. And it's good for us to use sort of a judgment call. What is the right thing to do right here? This one first told us to use the shell method, but honestly in practice, as we see right here, the disk method turns out to be a much cleaner way of calculating this solid revolution. So when you have a choice, make the best choice you can.